banana republic is a political science term for a politically unstable country, whose economy is largely dependent on exporting a limited resource product, for example bananas. It typically has stratified social classes, including a large, impoverished working class and a ruling plutocracy of business, political, and military elites. This politico-economic oligarchy controls the primary sector productions to exploit the country's economy. Origin: American writer O. Henry coined Banana Republic to describe the fictional Republic of Anshuria in the book Cabbages and Kings, a collection of thematically related short stories inspired by his experiences in Honduras between 1896 and 1897, when he was wanted in the United States for bank embezzlement. In political science, the term Banana Republic is a pejorative descriptor for a servile dictatorship that abets or supports, for kickbacks, the exploitation of large-scale plantation agriculture, especially banana cultivation. In economics, a Banana Republic is a country operated as a commercial enterprise for private profit, affected by a collusion between the state and favorite monopolies, in which the profit derived from the private exploitation of public lands is private property while the debts incurred thereby are a public responsibility. Such an imbalanced economy remains limited by the uneven economic development of town and country, and tends to cause the national currency to become devalued paper money, rendering the country ineligible for international development credit. Such government by thieves is a kleptocracy. Such a kleptocratic government is manipulated by foreign interests and functions mostly as ceremonial government that is unaccountable to its nation. The national legislature is, in effect, for sale, influential government employees illegitimately exploit their posts for personal gain, and the resulting government budget deficit is repaid by the country's working people who earn wages rather than making profits. Original Banana Republic the history of the first banana republic begins with the introduction of the banana to the U.S. in 1870, by Lorenzo Dal Baker, captain of the schooner Telegraph. He initially bought bananas in Jamaica and sold them in Boston at a 1,000% profit. The banana proved popular with Americans, as a nutritious tropical fruit that was less expensive than fruit grown locally in the U.S., such as apples. In 1913, for example, 25 cents bought a dozen bananas, but only two apples. Its popularity among Americans was also spurred by the American railroad tycoons Henry Miggs and his nephew, Minor C. Keith, who in 1873 began establishing banana plantations along the railroads they built in Costa Rica to produce food for their railroad workers. This experience led them to recognize the potential profitability of exporting bananas for sale and they began exporting the fruit to the southeastern United States. In the mid-1870s, to manage the new industrial agriculture business enterprise in the countries of Central America, Keith founded the Tropical Trading and Transport Company, one half of what would later become the United Fruit Company. By the 1930s, the international political and economic tensions of the United Fruit Company had enabled it to gain control of 80 to 90 percent of the U.S. banana trade. Nonetheless, despite the UFC monopoly, in 1924, the Vaccaro brothers established the Standard Fruit Company to export Honduran bananas to the port of New Orleans in the Gulf of Mexico coast of the U.S. The fruit exporters were able to keep U.S. prices so low because the banana companies, through their manipulation of the producing country's national land use laws, were able to cheaply buy large tracts of prime agricultural land for banana plantations in the countries of the Caribbean Basin, the Central American Isthmus, and the tropical South American countries of Euro, and, having rendered the native peoples landless through a policy of legalistic dispossession, were therefore able to employ them as low-wage workers. Moreover, by the late 19th century, three American multinational corporations a Euro the United Fruit Company, the Standard Fruit Company, and the Carmel Fruit Company a Euro dominated the cultivation, harvesting, and exportation of bananas, and controlled the road, rail, and port infrastructure of Honduras. In the northern coastal areas near the Caribbean Sea, the Honduran government ceded to the banana companies 500 hectares for each kilometer of railroad laid, even though there was still no passenger or freight railroad to Tegucigalpa, the national capital city. 
Among the Honduran people, the United Fruit Company was known as El Pulpo, because its influence had come to pervade their society, controlled their country's transport infrastructure, and sometimes violently manipulated national politics. Examples, Honduras. In the early 20th century, instrumental in establishing the Banana Republic stereotype was the U.S. businessman Sam Zamure, founder of the Caramel Fruit Company. He had entered into the banana export business by buying overripe bananas from the United Fruit Company to sell in New Orleans. In 1910, he bought 6,070 hectares of the Caribbean coast of Honduras for agricultural exploitation by the Caramel Fruit Company. In 1911, Zimure entered into a business and political alliance with Manuel Bonilla, an ex-president of Honduras, and General Lee Christmas, an American mercenary soldier, for the purpose of unilaterally changing the Republican government of Honduras. To this end, the mercenary army of the Caramel Fruit Company, led by General Christmas, carried out a coup d'état copyright tat against President Miguel Adavila and installed General Manuel Bonilla as his successor. The United States government turned a blind eye to this deposition of the elected government of Honduras by a privately owned army, with the U.S. State Department seeing President Davila as too politically liberal and a poor businessman whose management decisions had caused Honduras to become too indebted to Great Britain a euro an unacceptable geopolitical risk for the U.S. in light of the Monroe Doctrine. Moreover, domestically, the Davila government had slighted the Carmel Fruit Company by colluding with the rival United Fruit Company to award it a banana trade monopoly a euro, which it got in exchange for the fruit company's brokering of U.S. government loans for the Honduran government. Because of its resulting political instability, stalled economy, and huge external debt, the Republic of Honduras was excluded from international capital investment. Its financial deficit perpetuated its economic stagnation and so perpetuated its banana republic image as well. With the native government hobbled with a historical, inherited foreign debt, such fiscal weakness undermined the Honduran government's functions, and so allowed foreign multinational corporations to manage the country and the people of Honduras more effectively and efficiently a euro especially because the fruit companies had built, and thus controlled, the Honduran infrastructure. Had established long-distance communications and so were the principal employers in the economy of Honduras. In the event, the United States dollar became the legal tender currency of Honduras. The mercenary General Lee Christmas became commander-in-chief of the Army of Honduras, and later was appointed U.S. Consul to the Republic of Honduras. Nonetheless, 23 years later, by means of a hostile takeover, Sam Zamure assumed control of the rival United Fruit Company, in 1933. Guatemala. Guatemala suffered the regional socio-economic legacy of the Banana Republic, inequitably distributed agricultural land and natural wealth, uneven economic development, and an economy dependent upon a few export crops a euro usually bananas, coffee and sugar cane. The inequitable land distribution is the principal cause of national poverty and the low quality of Guatemalan life, and the concomitant socio-political discontent and insurrection. Almost 90% of the country's farms are too small to yield adequate subsistence harvests to the farmers, whilst 2% of the country's farms occupy 65% of the arable land, property of the local oligarchy. During the 1950s, the United Fruit Company convinced the governments of U.S. Presidents Harry Truman and Dwight Eisenhower that the popular, elected government of President Jacobo Abienz Guzma N of Guatemala was secretly pro-Euro-Soviet for having expropriated unused fruit company lands to landless peasants. In the Cold War context of the proactive anti-communist politics exemplified by U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy in the years 1947 a Euro 1957, Geopolitical concerns about the security of the Western Hemisphere facilitated President Eisenhower's ordering and authorizing Operation Success, the 1954 Guatemalan coup d'état copyright tat by means of which the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency deposed the democratically elected government of President Jacobo Abienz Guzma N and installed a pro-business government of Colonel Carlos Castillo Armas, which lasted for three years until his assassination by a presidential guard. 
a mixed history of elected presidents and puppet master military juntas were the governments of Guatemala in the course of the 36-year Guatemalan Civil War. However, in 1986, at the 26-year mark, the Guatemalan people promulgated a new political constitution, and elected Vinicio Cerezo president. Then Jorge Serrano y Laz. In art. In the encyclopedic, historical poetry in the book Canto General, the Chilean poet Pablo Neruda denounced foreign multinational corporate political dominance of Latin American countries with the four stanza poem La United Fruit Company. The second stanza excerpts read The Fruit Company, Incorporated. Reserved for itself the most succulent, the central coast of my own land, the delicate waste of the Americas. It rechristened its territories, as the Banana Republics, and over the sleeping dead, over the restless heroes, who brought about the greatness, the liberty and the flags, it established a comic opera. Gabriel Garcamara Quez's book 100 Years of Solitude depicts the capitalist imperialism of the banana companies as voracious and harmful to the inhabitants of Macondo. The questionable business policies of these companies, supported by the country's government, bring corruption and brutality to Macondo and oppression to the inhabitants. In this epic tale of magic realism, Joza copyright Arcadio Segundo the silent and solitary brother of Eliano Segundo, has been organizing the banana plantation workers to strike in protest of the inhumane working conditions. Macondo is placed under martial law, and the workers respond by sabotaging the plantation. The government reacts by inviting more than 3,000 of the workers to gather for a meeting with the leadership of the province and to resolve their differences. The meeting is a trick and the army surrounds the workers with machine guns and methodically kills them all. The corpses are collected onto a train and dumped into the sea. Joza copyright Arcadio Segundo, taken for dead, is thrown onto the train as well, but he manages to jump off the train and walk back to Macondo. There, he is horrified to discover that all memory of the massacre has been wiped out a year and none of the people of Macondo remember what happened and they refuse to believe Joza copyright Arcadio Segundo when he tells them. A heavy, unrelenting rain falls on the town and does not stop, destroying any physical traces of the massacre. Modern interpretations, many countries that obtained ostensible freedom from colonial masters in the 20th and 21st centuries have at times thereafter tended to share traits of banana republics due to influence of large private corporations in their politics, for example, a. United States Maldives, the Philippines, Nicaragua and Panama. See also, Absurdistan, Dictator Novel, Dutch Disease, Failed State, Hydraulic Empire, Kangaroo Court, Macondo, Neocolonialism, Nostromo, A Tale of the Seaboard, by Joseph Conrad, Reen Estate, Ruritania, William Walker, References. External links, from Albans to Zelia. Chiquerta in Latin America, video report by Democracy Now! Cabbages and Kings A Euro The O. Henry Book of Short Stories wherein he coined the Banana Republic term, the Banana Republic, the myth of the United Fruit Company.